hearing kind of the most salient um, resonant pieces that emerged in each of the four breakout groups, um, any final reflections from the anchors of each group. So I'm going to just start by asking um, either just one or both of the anchors of each of the groups to share um, share what was most resonant for you about your conversation um, that you want to like share with everybody. I wonder, Nicole, if you all want to start. We've um, delegated that responsibility <laughs> Great. to Maura, who will be speaking on behalf of our group. <laughs> Thank you, Maura. Yeah. Thank you, Maura. Yeah. Woo. Woo. There was no consent. Uh, it was, was, she totally got voluntold by me. <laughs> Absolutely voluntold. Oh, voluntold. That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> hard to offer you incredible um, uh, gems um, that were shared. So um, I, I want to start with Ebony. Um, we heard from Ebony and Nicole about their practices, um, and Ebony went first. Ebony, and I happen to have the also gift of having spent a little time with Ebony a couple of weeks ago at Duke in, a, in another kind of conference, so I've gotten a couple of angles on your work. And um, the foundation and actually I think it would apply to our conversation in general, is about emancipation. Mm -hmm. And this, the, I mean, like the grounding that you have Ooh. in notions of emancipation um, just uh, really blow me away. And, and that sort of everything comes from there, and I feel like I can really relate that and not this in this moment, but to this notion of the commons as well, and that, <coughs> that, that, that the commons depends on a kind of emancipation, first of all, and that um, what we find in ourselves when we are emancipated is this deep, I think you had that wonderful slide, like the deep, uh, there was a mouth, and like, yeah, like that's what it becomes available to us when we find this emancipation. Um, and that was linked to Nicole's work, particularly around ceremony. She did lead us through a ceremony with each other where we empowered and encouraged our own heroism. Um, and uh, that was very moving, and um, for each other's heroism, I should say. And um, so Nicole's work is also very deep and very inspiring around um, creating revolutionary practices slash ceremonies to, I would say, lead to this emancipation um, or 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 uh, contribute to this emancipation. Um, so that was that was. We we also heard about Lenny Reichenstahl. Um, <laughs> which was interesting and a very interesting sort of intersection to the um, thinking about danger, danger I would say, or dangerous practices um, within um, within. Yeah. Anyway, that's mm. what I got. Mm. Nice and done. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, Morgan. Um, would you or somebody else from your group want to share or reflect on your conversation? Um, well, I feel like kind of like threw a, a wrench into, into my group a little bit. Okay. Um, so I, I would love someone else to, to talk about what they got. I mean, basically, um, what uh, uh, we were really talking about, Claudia, like Claudia talked a lot about specific things that she did at uh, Oregon Shakespeare Festival. Mm -hmm. That a lot of it was about how people contribute, how, how uh, events happen around specific issues or actions. Uh, but, uh, and we talked about uh, magnetic centers and involvement of, of community, we talked about extraction of stories. But I, I, I'd really love someone else to respond. What do you do, Daniel? Or just share any reflection. Any reflections on what, what was resonant for you from that conversation? What stays with you? Sure. Um, so, um, you know, one of the questions was, um, you know, yeah, forgive me. Um, you've just done this to me again, where you've changed the performative score, and I'm trying to rise to the challenge. Uh, no, no, it's okay. It's okay, just give me a second. Um, so, so one of the things we talked about was, uh, or at least a sentence that I crafted was, because uh, you, you gave us a beautiful challenge of, hey, can you sum up in a sentence what your death charge is? What's, your, what's one thing you're doing to change the world? And I was like, well, I'm crafting self-generating, sustain, uh, sustaining performative scores for communities to do healthy uh, practices. Um, that was a beautiful sentence that you helped me to write. Um, 
we all told a lot of stories about um, the work that we're doing. So there's people at the table who are doing work um, where they're trying to help communities to um, create their own performances. So there's a lot of co-creation models that we talked about. Um, and one of the examples that I talked about was the Martin Luther King Day celebration, which is a, a show where we had to have a long-term strategy of uh, getting um, institutions to buy in to the project. And then it could become it could become self sustaining and uh, and it's a co creation model where everyone writes the show and everyone is in the show. Um, and then we also talked about dangers of extraction in communities. Uh, we talked about New Orleans, um, St. Louis, Ferguson. Um, we talked about capitalism in the market. And I, and again, I, forgive me. My notes are all Claudia notes. They weren't reflective of the conversation. They were reflective of the things Claudia was thinking about as everyone was sharing beautiful stories. So the market resists social justice. Um, so how do we how do we work beyond that? Um, can we how do we share infrastructure? So you talked some you shared some beautiful stories about HowlRound and shared infrastructure and HowlRound TV. Um, and uh, and then how do you share mission? Can you share values? And then you shared something beautiful about um, you can occupy the same landscape, and that might not mean that you have the same values, but you're mm -hmm. occupying the same landscape, which brought me back to my concept of the radical middle. Right. Mm -hmm. That's where we all have to mm -hmm. work, because mm -hmm. that's where we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Claudia. Yeah. Thank you. Mark, how about you and or others from your group? Uh, I, I, I put some Why don't you join me? Great. Now, why don't we do this? Let me tell you. Go first, and then I'll tell you what I meant for that. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, have you prepared? Uh, how, how do we prepare? One well, of the questions that, that kind of was here for me was just this idea of like, how do we prepare to imagine equity? To just, what, what's needed just to do that imagining? And, and you know, obviously it's something, you know, is that, uh, there's a kind of privilege that lets you imagine. And and the banker was saying that, that you know, until this equity, how can we collectively imagine if there's inequity? Because we're all imagining from very different places, you know. And so so that that notion very much kind of resonating uh, uh, in, in in my brain. Uh, one of the other things that, that we noted here was uh, neighborhood conversations and uh, local transformation. How do we just start to transform kind of on local levels either through Give a community conversation that can happen pretty informally that just gets people talking together, but but something about grounding can first in a in a local neighborhood place. Uh, uh, I'm not sure about the network theory. I think so. That's maybe can sure. Um, this. I think folks were talking about um, the power of some kind of artist activist networks, um, uh, like alternate roots and some of the other ones that are out there that um, you know. Uh, we're really moving from this kind of a spoke and a hub approach to these kind of networks that are working together equally, and that's being mirrored not only within arts and culture, but within movements um, in the country, and um, technology is allowed to do that, that um, even, even more. Uh, but it's still being um, replicated just in, in our home communities also. Uh, we talked about um, the power of of art and cultural practice to uh, around around neural networks that it reaches a different place than facts and figures do, mm -hmm. um, and that there is a that that we all are capable of that. But artists had a special role, um, uh, and um, in kind of creating that, uh, creating that pathway and holding that. Um, some folks we asked we had a brief conversation about popular culture, um, kind of the. The kind of Kool Aid that we're the Kool Aid levels in the ocean and how we're swimming in it um, and and how do we affect that um, from all the messages that are kind of coming into us all the time um, and we talked about culture having the power to act on culture. So, mm -hmm. that. Did we forget anything else? Great, thank you so much, um, Vijay. I'm wondering if you might. Be willing to. Oh, I thought you would do it. I wasn't thinking in an orderly way either at all. Does anybody else from our group 
want to... Um, it's a disordered version of your group. So. Yeah. <laughs> share some resonant bear, maybe, or Todd? Uh, I can share some thoughts. Yeah. Uh, so, um, we started out kind of talking, getting like a sense of what HowlRound does and, and how they're functioning and um, how they've sort of opened up uh, space in uh, the performance world for people to be operating in a more sort of common space model. Um, and uh, anybody feel free to jump in at any point. <laughs> uh, and uh, we talked about, I loved your question, Javier, about um, the role of remembering in terms of imagining. So mm -hmm. what, do, what do we have to uh, remember backwards in order to be able to um, imagine forward into the future? Mm -hmm. um, we talked around that. We kind of talked on all kinds of different things. Those are the things that are sticking with me right now. Yeah, and you also shared some about the project you're working on, yeah. which, do you, do you want to just say, like, Sure, yeah. Just so name it so that people can ask you about, about it. About the Dakar Project? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I talked a little bit about the Dakar Project, which is a oral history and theater project happening in New Orleans, where um, after the last lesbian bar in New Orleans closed a few years ago, we started taking oral histories of um, the people who had sort of come of age in those spaces. And um, so it, it was just like really resonant with what you had shared about this, this idea of remembering in order to imagine. So going back and learning these queer histories that are often really sort of sublimated and um, underground and, and hidden for you know for for good reason but but often aren't sort of transmitted in the same way that like other lineages are and so going back to learn that history in order to empower ourselves to be able to envision a, a queer future mm -hmm. forward yeah so yeah and I'd say we also spent a fair amount of time wrestling with what David had presented and the challenges really of of living in in capitalism and dealing with the market and the institutions we've inherited and trying to make you know, make a way out of, of that and sort of really thinking about, I mean, you were sort of talk, we talked some about the need to really create enough of an alternative that you're giving people an, an, a viable option for meeting their needs that is really separate from these institutions that are creating so much harm and damage. So, you know, we talked some about that and what those, those might look like. Um, I think also Vijay, in sharing about HowlRound, really talked about how in creating this commons online, you've really sh begun to shift the culture of the theater community from one that at once was very you know, competitive um, to one that's much more collaborative and willing to share and, um, and come together in, in new and different ways, which seemed really, really powerful and promising, I'd say. For me, it was very inspiring. Right, that came up, came up with us too, the whole idea of like sharing resources and not being competitive, really sort of, you know, organizing around not necessarily a shared value, but you know, an intentionality that can embrace different approaches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm wondering if there's any other just reflections that folks um, that have bubbled up in these conversations that anyone really wants to share with the larger group. Um, in preparation to close the conversation for today and knowing that we're gonna come back to this tomorrow and I think make more sense and meaning of how these three conversations that we've had throughout the day are connected and what it means for us going forward. Um, I'm, I'm so inspired and excited about your uh, presentation and um, just allowing me to get a little bit more in depth on a subject that has been kind of on the periphery of my mind. Um, on the, but at the same time, I'm also so conscious, and this is true with HowlRound too, that there have been communities and cultures and um, you know non-dominant communities that have that have had these practices and had these this shared you know mentality ethos for you know centuries. And so whenever I'm in a group of like contemporary performance makers, um, I sometimes want to remind us that it's not so contemporary, <laughs> you know, A, and B, like that, we, that honor that existence that's already in, has been in place. Mm -hmm. um, it's so easy to think we're, we're revolutionizing when in fact it's something else that's yeah. happening. Yeah. 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 I think that yeah. the injustice that we speak of thrives on amnesia. Yeah. 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 That the memory over here, the memory is the great innovator. Yeah. You know, you don't have to keep making new memory is the innovator. Mm. Amnesia and anonymity. 
Yeah, the lack of bias between people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, another suggestion would be that for a change, uh, if people of color write history for one year <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. and, and the dominant narrative just reads it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I wonder uh, you know, what that would be. Uh, uh, because we, we have never articulated uh, you know, publicly our own histories. Uh, our history uh, has always been framed by um, where we are the subjects of the gays. Uh, we've never really had agency in the center. Uh, and, uh, and, and in this, in this group, I, I'm, uh, I'm uh, uh, hoping that I'm not, I don't have to add the disclaimer. What I mean is allies are, uh, uh -huh. uh, right. you know, I mean, I'm just assuming that this is a group where we don't have to say disclaimers. Yeah, I appreciate that. Other, just, yeah, and anything else that folks want to bring into this space before we close? Reflections that are bubbling. I just want to say how profoundly grateful I feel to be part of a convening like this, mm -hmm. and that that is, that is bubbling up almost more than anything, that mm -hmm. the power that this kind of space holding, invitation, and space sharing can offer us. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope to think about ways to replicate this. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about my classroom actually a lot mm -hmm. based on this experience this weekend. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Todd, did you want to? Oh, I don't know. I feel like I talk so much. Um, I guess there's this sense that we were talking about in our group that I feel here too in response to what Daniel said is that there is a way in which um, and this, this goes back, I think, also to something Carrie was saying before. It's like you spend a lot of your life in the fight against what is, and then at a certain point you, you make a different world. You make alternative world, and I feel like what you guys have done or invited us into this weekend is kind of a picture of that kind of alternate world, and it is sufficient, and it is abundant, and it, and it um, and we've seen, and even in our group talking about it, the HowlRound example, the way it can, act, suddenly everybody in that other world is scrambling to have some of what the alternate has. Because it has aliveness. Because it is alive, it's vital, and it's, mm -hmm. and it's bubbling up. And then the other thing, which is a thought that goes back to a, a meeting at HowlRound, and Matthew was there and we were talking about it, is this book, this Sebastian Junger book, Tribe, which is about PTSD, but this goes to this goes to the point of um, Morris' point, which is that communal cultures, because they embrace returning warriors, don't have the same struggles with PTSD that our um, advanced capitalist system do does, where we reject that part of ourselves and outsource it to other people and then reject them. And so there is that thing that, so it is that thing about the liberation of memory. It's like remembering who we are and where we come from is also a way of finding our own alternative systems that are even deeper than the present one, which is, which is old and dominant, but not as old. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I think with that, we're gonna close. Oh, sorry. And um, Matthew, do you wanna, do you want to instruct us or lead us? You say something about um, tonight and tomorrow and this transition time. Uh, and well, one thing that occurs to me from all three of these conversations and David's wonderful talk uh, that reaffirms the, uh, what's it called, the saying that the map is not the territory. <laughs> well, with that in mind, I think that, that there's something about tomorrow's conversation that has to do with what is the territory. And, what is the map, um, so that we can use both to our advantage in concrete ways as well. Um, thinking about constellations and how do we use these uh, bridges that get built in a short period of time going forward. What are things that are very specific that we'd like to see change in the collective imagination? Um, and then how do we help each other? 
Uh, yes, that. Um, <clears throat> we're going to have a very quick transition now. Um, and I need to ask that it be um, efficient. And I, I forgive the, that uh, for this day, but it'll be helpful because we're trans transitioning to having our performance. So I know everyone can empathize a little bit. Uh, <laughs> or a lot of you can. Um, so uh, tonight, uh, there's a dinner um, up the Asheville Lake House.